Back with you tonight on In Focus, News from Africa, Channel 405. President Cyril Ramaphosa has arrived in Nigeria for the start of a week-long visit to the Western African region. The Four Nations tour will see Ramaphosa visit Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Ghana and Senegal. The visit, which concludes on the 7th of December, serves to reinforce South Africa's bilateral relationship with the other countries concerned. The trip by President Cyril Ramaphosa is aimed at strengthening partnerships directed at African development and cooperation in multilateral forums. During the visit, South Africa and its partner states in West Africa will explore ways to leverage the opportunities that are presented by the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. That's for mutual benefit and with greater support from businesses conducting intra-African trade and investment. We're going on this epic journey uh, into the heart of our continent. I'm really pleased that uh, you're coming along and uh, we're going to be visiting quite a number of countries, four countries, very important countries, two francophone, two anglophone, and uh, these are countries where we are hoping to cut deals and button down deals and uh, do good diplomatic work. Ramaphosa is accompanied by a delegation of ministers and business leaders with a view of growing economic relations and people-to-people -people interaction between South Africa and the four West African countries. The president says he refused to allow this trip to be halted by reports of a new COVID-19 variant outbreak in the region. A number of those presidents called to find out if we are still coming. And uh, we said, yes, we are coming. Uh, we've uh, uh, rejected this notion uh, that is being propagated by the more developed economies and some, you know, smaller countries uh, that uh, the Omicron variant uh, is the one that should uh, lead to a blockage and a ban of travel. We reject that in the strongest of terms. The state visit to the Federal Republic of Nigeria will coincide with the 10th session of the Nigeria-South African Binational Commission and will reflect on progress made in advancing trade and investment between the two countries. During the four-state tour, South Africa and its partners will explore ways to leverage the opportunities presented by the African Continental Free Trade Area. All right, let's look at this now. The Le Fusonke Institute, in partnership with uh, a, a IS holding uh, what uh, is called a multi-stakeholder forum and political party assembly, uh, a workshop with the aim of forging a way towards a democratic Swaziland, comprised of pro-democracy stakeholders. The parties say they want to work on cementing a common plan of action to compel radical political and economic reforms in Swaziland with or without the king. For more on this, I'm joined now by human rights lawyer and chairperson of the Multi-Stakeholders Forum, Tulani Masego. Tulani, good evening and thank you very much for your time. What's the aim of this workshop, especially, of course, after the, the unrest that uh, we have been seeing in, in Swaziland? One uh, would uh, uh, say uh, it probably is still going on right now if uh, uh, you were to ask uh, some of the organizations. Well, thank you, Chawo. Thank you for having us. The aim of the workshop is to consolidate our position with regard to the uh, proposed negotiations and dialogue you know, under the facilitation of uh, SADAC, the SADAC organ Troika, you know, led by President Ramaphosa. So we have decided to come together as the broad sectors of Swaziland, Swaziland political parties, to forge a way forward in how we want to see the process unfolding towards a democratic president uh, in our time. And who are the players that are going to be uh, on this? I believe you've even invited Zimbabwe uh, delegation to be on this particular workshop. And what do you hope their contribution will be? Well, we understand that uh, SADAC has been involved in a number of countries in the region, Zimbabwe of obviously being one of them. And we do remember that our own king, King Mswati, was involved in that process. We understand that in Lesotho, Sadak has, has been involved. So we want to learn from these experiences so that we can 
prepared ourselves. You know, we know that the potholes on the road. We know that the you know people don't have so much faith in Sadak, given its short shortfalls in, in the past and recent history where they were involved. So we do want to learn from even South Africa itself. We know that your own country came from a period of uh, hardships, of violence and conflicts, of misunderstanding, and came up came up together with a new uh, dispensation under a democratic constitution. So we want to learn from those processes so that we can send the world position towards the dialogue in Swaziland. Yeah. What does that preparation look like in, in practical terms? Well, we understand that uh, it has been said that uh, the government of Swaziland, together with SADAC, will engage in a process of crafting terms of reference. We think that uh, there can be no game of negotiations without us as participants in the, in the process. We therefore want to have an input on how we see the terms of reference crafted, what they must look like in terms of content, and uh, for instance, things like the terms of reference of the negotiation, the chairmanship of the process, the recording of, of the process, in case they are deadlocks, how do we want to see those deadlocks uh, uh, resolved as we engage with the process going forward. So those are the things we want to be talking about. We don't want the government to impose terms of reference on us. We are the ones We've been calling for dialogue, so we must be part of that process, not just as spectators. Yeah. Is this another form, would you say, of, of uh, maybe not even community this time around, but continental mobilization to, to try and, and, and get at least the, the block behind the, the, the cries of the pro-democracy protesters in Swaziland? Well, Tavo, our history tells us that... Uh, as I have said, uh, it cannot be left on Sadak alone, you know, to help us come out with Quagmire. We do believe that other organizations, be it the Commonwealth, the AU, the UN itself, you know, should lend their support and, you know, engage with the President of South Africa to ensure that uh, the King does commit to the process. As we see right now, we see a posture of lack of commitment on the part of His Majesty's in his government they are just buying time. They talk, you know, about dialogue, but we don't see action towards that process. So we do hope that uh, this meeting will help us, you know, get more support in terms of the voices calling for the dialogue and, you know, persuade the king to make serious effort to ensure that we don't drop the ball towards a peaceful, you know, solution in the crisis of Swaziland. Is there any degree of uh, communication right now between uh, the uh, pro-democracy protesters and, and the king, or at least uh, the, the, the royal household and those who are in, in, in government currently in Swaziland? This is why, Tabo, we are concerned that the king uh, promised uh, the president of South Africa that uh, him and this government are committed to the talks. But we have not seen reaching out from their side to us <clears throat> to say, how do we begin the process? So we are deeply concerned that uh, the king indicates right and then you know turns left. This is a situation that we can't allow to continue. Uh, you will know that uh, this is a time where the king engages in what they, he calls the Ingola ceremony. So he's now gone into seclusion. We are hoping that uh, he would do so because we can't stop him. He would do so, but he would have left a team of uh, government ministers and maybe senior members of the royal family to engage with us so we can prepare the way forward towards the engagement. But those things are not happening. The state silent from, from the king and government. So we're deeply concerned that uh, we're being made to believe that uh, something will happen when at the end of the day, nothing might happen. You'll also understand, Chabo, that he mentioned that he is a dialogue happening at uh, his own backyard, the Sibaya. We don't believe that we can have any meaningful engagement in the backyard of the king's uh, 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 residence in the Sibaya. That forum has never been a forum for serious engagement. And in the recent past, he has used that forum to undermine, denigrate, insult, you know, those of his people who have been calling for change. That, therefore, we don't see uh, the king really commit, committed to the process of dialogue. Yeah. What are the key resolves or resolutions that 
are emerging from um, uh, all the stakeholders, particularly pro-democracy protesters, from the unrest that we have seen, at least in July and, and in the last couple of months. What are some of the key resolutions coming out of there that you're looking at implementing going forward? We are hoping, uh, Tabo, that uh, what has been agreed upon in terms of uh, at least the bare minimum of what we call the five-point principle or five-point plan. Uh, whilst people have been calling for the release of the two MPs who were arrested in July, the issue is more than that. We have said that, uh, number one, we need to see an all-inclusive and you know, externally mediated political uh, dialogue. We do believe that the crisis that has been recurring in this country since uh, uh, from at least the 12th of April 1973, when the late king appropriated the independence constitution, the problem started there. We well, are therefore saying there cannot be a process going forward that is not, not intrusive. That's the first point. The second point, we all agree that uh, the king and government must, en must ensure that there's a total unbending of all political parties in Swaziland, including what you call the People's you know, Democratic Movement, Podemo, which has been listed under the tourism laws of Swaziland. That's the second point. The third point, uh, Tabo, we do believe that you are in this quagmire, fundamentally because the supreme law of the country that we have has failed you know, to guarantee basic human rights. It has failed to guarantee the key tenets of the rule of law in terms of sovereign powers. It has failed to ensure that all the people have an equal stake in the governance of the country. We are therefore saying as a third point, we do need to have a new democratic constitution for Swaziland. Yeah. The fourth point, which uh, the government sh already shot down, is that uh, in the process of negotiation, we do need to agree that the time has come to set up an interim you know, government so that uh, during the time of negotiations, a government that commands the support and the team of the people is in place. We do believe that, uh, unfortunately, his mission and the government have got dirty hands. You know, as you rightly say, that uh, from late July, we have, we have been counting people who have been killed. We have counted uh, 80 people, but the number to date is over 100. We can't have a government which has killed its own people continue to govern. We are therefore saying it is fundamental that you agree to setting up an interim government to take care of the interim process. Obviously, you know, the last point that we've agreed upon at Tabo is that uh, whatever we do must then give birth to a dispensation underpinned by a multi-party democracy in this country, you know, founded on the rule of law. We all agree on those, on those points. But, you know, we also then say, before we even talk about these issues, we must engage in a process of talks about talks so that the two sides can find each other and then agree on how we manage the process going forward. Those are the things that we say can take the country forward right. and we don't doubt uh, that, that position. Much appreciated. Tulane is still sticking to those resolutions and standing firmly on those resolutions as agreed upon with other stakeholders uh, in this pro-democracy uh, formation.